case law. For example, our Prophet, as Muslims, we believe in the Quran, which is the Book of Allah. And as Muslims, we believe in the Sunnah, which includes the Hadith, the sayings of the Prophet. Now, our Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, when he was on the earth, when he was giving dawah, preaching to people, our Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, he said, Manners, the best of you is the best in manners. So when I come here, I come here as a Muslim, I come here to follow the Sunnah of our Prophet. What is the Sunnah? It is the ways of the Prophet. So our Prophet preached, gave dawah. Our Prophet spoke to people and I am trying to do the same thing. I am trying to speak to people. In Speaker's Corner, it is Speaker's Corner, world famous place. And in Speaker's Corner, we have freedom of speech. As long as we stay within the law, we can speak. And I think we should stay within the law and speak. We will have no problem. Okay? Now, some people come here, even today earlier on, they see me as a Muslim speaker, and they start saying, oh, you are terrorists, oh, you are Daesh, oh, you murder people, oh, there's one person here, he said, oh, you are so bad as Muslim taxi drivers. You understand? Because apparently somewhere, if some Muslim taxi driver did something wrong, he thinks every Muslim is responsible, which is not right. You see? Because in Islam, in Islam, only that person, a person is responsible for his or her own actions. Okay? If somebody, for example, Let's say, in every country of the world, there is law. The laws are necessary. Why? To have some sort of discipline, to have some sort of order. Okay? And the law will say, murder is a crime. Robbery is a crime. You know, to commit murder is crime. To commit robbery is crime. To commit fraud is crime. To commit theft is crime. To commit kidnapping is crime. The laws are necessary to have some sort of discipline. To lo laws are necessary to have some sort of order. Now, any person in any country come back to Great Britain, beautiful Britain where we are standing, where I am speaking. In this beautiful country, Great Britain, we have English law. The law is English law. Of course the law says murder is a crime, rape is a crime, Committing robbery is a crime, committing theft is crime, committing fraud is crime. Now, if someone does not commit any offense, any crime, if someone is not involved in any criminal offense, he has no problems with the police or with the judiciary. But if somebody breaks the law, then he will have problems, the police will come into action, they will take him to the courts, and in the courts there will be jury, and there will be the judge with the final say. Okay? English law. And those people who don't break the law, they don't have problem with the police, 
they don't have problem with the judiciary. Simple as that. That is why the law is there, to have some sort of order. Yeah, you want to say something? Yeah, but the problem is, it's, uh, if you look around the world, yes. uh, there's uh, a mosque the other day. There is a? There's a mosque the other day that's uh, at uh, Shia. It's at this point. I can't, I can hardly hear you. You can so, stand there and speak a bit more louder. Look, there's a mosque the other day. There's a mosque. In Afghanistan. Muslim place of worship and masjid, uh, yes. For Shia. Yes. And that was a uh, uh, bomb. Bomb? Yes. That was a big one. I've probably heard about it other times. Okay. Now, it seems to me that uh, when people make judgments about uh, Islam, uh, well, they make the judgments about the whole of it. Okay, uh, so. You know, and uh, you know, you've got other places of worship. Um, you know, you've got some uh, uh, teenage girls. Okay, so, one point at a time, sir. Thank you very much. One point at a time. Sir, you mentioned about a Muslim place of worship, about a masjid, that somebody placed a bomb there and it killed some people. Right, now, sir, we Muslims, we have our Quran to read, to study, and to be guided by the Quran, which is the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Creator. Now, as far as killings are concerned, when we Muslims read our Quran, why should we read our Quran? It is very good. We are Muslims. It is good when we read our Quran. For example, in Surah Al-Baqarah, the cow, Surah chapter number 2, Ayah number 2, Allah tells us, Zalikal kitabu la raibafi. This glorious book, in which there is no doubt, it is a guidance for the God conscious who fear Allah. It is a guidance for those who fear Allah. Now, no Muslim can ever place a bomb in a Muslim place of worship. Now, sir, can I thank you very much. No Muslim can put a bomb in a Muslim place of worship and blow up people. Now, I'll give an example why not. In our Quran, when we read Surah Al Qaeda, the table spread. Surah chapter number 5, Ayah verse number 32. More than 1400 years ago, when our Quran was revealed, Allah said, anyone, I remember the Quran is the book of us Muslims. We read it, we have to believe it. Live our lives according to it. So Allah said, in Surah al maida the table spread, Surah chapter number 5, Ayah verse number 32. Allah said, if anyone kills a person, a person means one person. A person can be a Muslim, can be a Christian, can be a Jew, can be a white person, can be a black person, can be a North American, can be a South American, can be an African, can be a European, can be a Australasian, can be an Asian. Allah says, if anyone kills a person, one person unjustly, it is as though he has killed the whole of humanity. This is in our Quran, that life is so important that killing just one person, whether it is a male or a female, killing one person, anyone, unjustly, is as though killing the whole of humanity. And the second part of that verse, Allah tells us, if anyone 
saves the life of a person, one person, anyone, any belief, any color, any ethnic group from anywhere. Allah says, if anyone saves the life of a person, one person, it is as though he has saved the life of the whole of humanity. This is our example. One more example, then I'll come to you. In the next surah, in surah Al-An'am, surah chapter number six, surah Al-An'am, the cattle. Surah chapter number 6, ayah, verse number 151, part of it, Allah says, Life is sacred, Allah tells us in our Quran, life is sacred, do not kill unjustly. Is that clear, sir? Yes. Thank you. Well, the problem is, uh, Muslims are not obeying. Muslims are not obeying. Can I, can you stop there? Can I answer that? Sure. Thank you very much. Okay. The gentleman says that the Muslims are not obeying. What, the Quran? Uh, Do you mean we are not obeying the Quran? Uh, that part of it, anyway. Thank you, Arba. Let me answer you. Say hello. Muslims should always be Muslim. Muslims should always act like Muslims. For example, when we read our Quran, Allah tells us in Surah An Nisa. In Surah An Nisa, the women, Surah chapter number 4, Ayah verse number 93, Allah says, Allah's curse is on that person who kills another Muslim, deliberately knowing them. It's in our Quran. So, killings, whether it's a Muslim or whether it's a non-Muslim, we can't go out there and start killing. I'll give an example. Allah tells us in our Quran, in Surah Al-Hashr, the gathering, Surah chapter number 59, Ayah verse number 7. Allah says in our Quran, What the Prophet gives you, take it. That's the meaning of that. What the Prophet gives you, take it. Anhu fantahu. What the Prophet forbids you, leave it. Now, simple. What the Prophet gives you, take it. What the Prophet forbids you, leave it. Who is the Prophet? Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Muhammad peace be upon him. The last and the greatest of all the Prophets. The one Muhammad peace be upon him on whom the Holy Quran was revealed. And I'm giving you examples from our Quran. So, our Prophet, what did he give us? Before our Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, passed away, he said, behind me, I leave two things. Number one, the Quran which is the book of Allah. That's number one. Number two, he said, my sunnah. So he said, behind me, I leave two things, the Quran and my sunnah. And he said, if you obey this, if you live your life according to this, you will never go astray. 
you will never go wrong. That is why we Muslims, for us it is very important, both the Quran, Book of Allah, and the Sunnah, including the Hadith, the sayings of the Prophet. I'll give you an example. One example, why Hadith, the sayings of the Prophet are important. They are very important. Why? I'll give you an example. So many examples. I'll give you one. Allah tells us in our Quran, in many ayahs, many verses, Allah says, Wa'akimu salah. Wa'akimu salah. Establish prayer. Establish prayer. Allah says, establish prayer. How do we pray? Do we pray sunnah? Do we pray fard? Do we pray nafal? Do we pray witr? How do we pray? When do we pray? What should we pray? So Allah says, Waqi Musala. Waqi Musala. Waqi Musala in our Quran. In, in many ayahs, several ayahs. So how do we pray? We turn to Hadith. We turn to our Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. We turn to the Sunnah, the sayings of our Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. And our Prophet, so Allah says, Waqi Musala. Establish prayer. How do we pray? We turn to Sunnah, turn to Hadith. Our Prophet Muhammad, Muhammad, peace be upon him, he said, Pray as you see me pray. We are from the people of the Sunnah. The Sunnah is from the Prophet. So why not follow Sunnah? Why not follow the Prophet? So Allah said, Waqi Musala, establish prayer. So we come to the Prophet. The Prophet said, pray as you see me pray. That is how we pray. Fajr, Dohar, Asr, Maghreb, Isha. Why do we pray this? Our Prophet prayed. Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam he prayed. And we follow the Rasul, follow the Prophet. That's why we Muslims pray. Otherwise, how do we get the knowledge? Of what shall we pray, Fajr? Do we pray to Sunnah, to Fard? What shall we pray at Tohar? Shall we pray? What are Sunnah? Are they Muakkada or are they Gair Muakkada? Are they compulsory or are they non-compulsory? So anyway, another thing, another thing, very important. The very first word in our Quran, sir, is the word Iqra. Read. Recite. So when we Muslims read our Quran, when we Muslims recite our Quran, we get knowledge. We learn. And when we get knowledge, we learn. We can act upon it. We can tell other about it. We can preach about it. We can speak about it. And you know what did our Prophet said, Muhammad peace be upon him? This knowledge, this learning is so important. In one of the hadith sayings of the Prophet, our Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him, he said, seek knowledge. Seek knowledge even if you have to go to China. In another saying of the Prophet, another hadith of our Prophet, Muhammad peace be upon him, he said, seek knowledge from the cradle to the grave. Knowledge is very important. Knowledge is very good. A Muslim Reads the studies the Quran. A Muslim studies the Sunnah. A Muslim studies knowledge, general knowledge. 
a Muslim can speak for hours and hours. It is good. How did Islam spread? Islam did not spread by the sword. But Islam spread through Dawa, through preaching. Why should we preach? Why should we preach? It is very important that we should preach. Why? Our pro in our Quran, Assalamualaikum. Allah bless you. In our Quran, when we read Surah An Nisa, the women, Surah chapter number four, ayah verse number eighty. In our Quran, Allah says, "May you tell Rasula, Fakad ata Allah." May you tell Rasula, Fakad ata Allah. In English, Allah said, in our Quran, He who obeys the Prophet, verily he obeys Allah. Why? Because Allah. Is Arabic, it means the God. No, Allah sent the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, as a Prophet. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, as a messenger to the people, to guide the people, to lead the people. What did our Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, say? Our Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. He said, Hadith, sayings of the Prophet. Our Prophet said, preach on my behalf, even if it is one ayah. <laughs> so preaching, dawah, is very important. Why? Our Prophet said it. Our Prophet took part in dawah, in preaching. And we take part in dawah in preaching. Why? It is sunnah. So our Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him said, preach on my behalf, even if it is one ayah. Now here, even if it is one ayah, because even one ayah is gold. Even one ayah is very important. Even Giving dawah, preaching one ayah is very good. Preaching even one ayah is very relevant. For example, in Surah Tunnisa, the women, Surah chapter number 4, I just quoted ayah number 8080. Now I want to quote ayah verse number 82. So Surah Tunnisa, the women, Surah chapter number 4, ayah verse number 82. Allah says in our Quran, Afala yatadabbarun al Quran. Do they not consider in the Quran? Do they not think about what's in the Quran? Do they not consider in the Quran? Walau kana min inde ghayrillahi, la wajadu fi ikhtilafan kasira. If the Quran, if it was from any other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it would have many contradictions. If it was from any other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it would have many mistakes. But no, the Quran is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The Quran is from the Creator. That is why in the Quran, there are no mistakes. There are no contradictions. Why can't there be any mistakes in the Quran? Why can't there be any contradictions in the Quran? Why? Because it's from the Creator Himself, from Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala knows everything. He can hear everything. He can see everything. He can see what's in our priests. For example,
example. No mistakes, no contradictions. Why? It's the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's the book of the Creator. I'll give you another example. When we Muslims read Surah Al-Kaf, the cave, Surah chapter number 18, Arabic, beautiful Arabic language, Quran. So when we read Surah Al-Kaf, the cave, Surah chapter number 18, Ayah verse number 27, not the whole Ayah, part of the Ayah. When Allah revealed the Quran, Allah mentions in ayah number 27, Surah Al-Kaf, Allah says, La mubaddila le kalimate. La mubaddila le kalimate. In English, no one, Allah said when He revealed the Quran, no one will be able to change my words. Allah is right. Allah knows everything. What Allah said true. That is why the Quran, pick up the Quran in any continent, in North America, in South America, in Africa, in Asia, in Australasia, in Europe, pick up the Quran in a Muslim place of worship, in a masjid, pick up the Quran in a public library. The Quran from the beginning to the end. Everywhere, anywhere is the same. It is the same. Why is it still the same? In the year, I am speaking on the last day, on the 31st of December 2017, in the Christian calendar. In the year 1439, in our Islamic calendar, more than 1400 years ago, the Quran was revealed. No changes, no contradictions. Why? When we read Surah Al Hijr, we read Surah Al Hijr, the rocky tract, Surah. Chapter number 15, Ayah, verse number 9. Allah said in the Quran, Allah said, Inna nahnu nazzal nazikra wa inna lahu lahafizhun. In English, Allah told us that Allah, He has revealed the Quran and that He is the guardian. When Allah tells us He has revealed the Quran and He is the guardian, how can there be changes in the Quran? No way. How can there be mistakes in the Quran? No way. Salaamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. May Allah bless you. Okay? Zakallah. Welcome to Speaker's Corner. Okay? Now, so the Quran, the Quran was revealed on Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, who was an Arab, who was he, an Arab, and today, in the year 2017, last day, in the year 1439 in our Islamic calendar, did you know, Quran is read in every country of the world. The Quran is read in every continent of the world except Antarctica. There are no human beings there. Who reads the Quran? The first person to read the Quran, to know the Quran, on whom the Quran was revealed, was an Arab, Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi but today, people in every country, they read the Quran. The Muslims, they read the Quran. Why? Because the Muslims are in every country of the world. 
Well, people read the Bible no. in every country. Does that no. make that true? No. In the year 14, I'll just finish, then I'll come to you, okay? Well, you yes. Thank you very much. No, just man. be patient. I'll just finish now, and I'll come to you. Just be patient. Thank you very much, okay? Now, so Muhammad, peace be upon him, who was an Arab, the Quran was revealed to him. He was the first person to recite the Quran, to read the Quran. How do you know but that? now, in the year 1439, did you know, the Europeans, they read the Quran. North Americans, they read the Quran. South Americans, they read the Quran. So what? Asians, they read the Quran. The Europeans, they read the Quran. Africans, they read the Quran. Australians, they read the Quran. White people, they read the Quran. People read Black people, people read they read Harry the Potter. Quran. Does that people make that true? of different ethnic groups, different colors, different languages read the Quran. Why? Because the Quran, Book of Allah, is acceptable for everyone. For the Quran it's because was revealed for everyone. Children to why? Read it. That's why. Why? Last words, then I'll come to you. Why is the Quran for everyone? Why? Well, because Allah me. tells us in our Quran, when we read Surah Al Anbiya, the Prophets, Surah chapter number 21, Ayah verse number 107, 107, Allah says, Wama arsalaka illa rahmatan lil alameen. In English, Allah said, we have not sent you, O Muhammad, but as a mercy for the whole world. So Muhammad, peace be upon him, was for the whole world. And the Quran is also for the whole world. Yes, you want to ask a question. You want to ask a question. Yes. Uh, do, you ever feel, do you ever think you're wasting your life for this stuff? Thank you very much. Very nice of you, sir, to ask me a question. No, in answering your question, I think when we Muslims read the Quran, we are not wasting our lives. When we Muslims act according to the teachings of the Quran, we Muslims, we are not wasting our lives. No. To read the Quran is go gold. To believe in the Quran is gold. To act upon the Quran is gold. Where do you think you're going to go when what? you die? Where are you going to go when you die? You're going to go to heaven. He asked me the question. Yeah. Oh, so let me answer. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for asking me the question. Now, the gentleman said, where will we Muslims go in the hereafter? The answer is simple. The answer is simple. When we Muslims read our Quran, we come to Surah al muminun the believers. Surah chapter number 23. Ayah number, verse number one. Allah tells us, Qad aflahal mu'minun. Successful indeed are the believers. So we are believers, we are successful. Where? Qad aflahal mu'minun. Successful indeed are the believers in this world, in dunya. And in the successful Akhira. in what respect? How do you mean you're successful? Well, in other words, this, thank you again for asking me a question. In a nice manner. Thank you. Now, sir, <laughs> we will be successful. You have. Why? Yes. Sir, now, go on. as Muslims, we know that this life, we are told when we study the Quran and the Sunnah of our Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him, we know that this life is like a test. 
So we have to pass this You've got one line. That's all you've got. Yes. Yeah. I, I ain't going to spend it down on my knees. So it is what. So Allah is very merciful. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is very merciful. Why? Because we have one life. Rather we live here 20 years, 40 years, 60 years, 80 years. But Allah is so merciful. In the Akhirah, we will be living forever. In dunya, in this world, we will die. But in the Akhirah, in the hereafter, we will never die. Why? Because their life is forever. When we read the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us. So Allah is so merciful. Allah say to Allah so Muslim barriers to stop innocent people from being killed. Is that what they are? Of course they are. This for the trucks to stop. Uh, can you? Okay. Can you? Oh, David, I didn't realize that. Okay. okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, okay. Excuse them. me. Muslim barriers. Okay. Excuse me. Can you repeat your question again? Are these Muslim barriers to stop your brothers killing us uh, infidels, kafirs, going to enjoy Christmas? Are those barriers to stop? That's right. Can I? From will Berlin, you, okay, from okay, Nice, okay, okay. Will you from listen? Paris. Will you listen? That's right. Are those barriers... Just the bridge. Excuse me. Are those barriers there yes. to stop people killing innocents? Muslims killing innocent. Innocent. Chinese people okay. don't do okay. it. Okay. Muslim okay. people kill okay, people right. on the bridge. Okay, now stop. Stop, let me ask. They don't drive no. you. No, no. They don't no. drive inside you. Brother, Jazakallah. Brother. Okay, brother. They kill people. Okay. They don't kill them. Japanese. They will kill them. Okay. If it's any bad. Have you ever seen a Chinese man drive a bus? My answer to you is there. Yeah, Islam is a religion of peace. Yeah. Now, now, now. You said those barriers are there. Brother, it's just doing propaganda. Okay. No, anyway. no. If you say to die, brother, can I speak? Of a building. Yes. Brother, brother, Jazakallah, Jazakallah. He's trying to wreck it. Okay. Let me speak. Yes, yes. Allah bless you. Okay. Now, actually, you said, you said. Those barriers, barriers are to stop Muslims. Listen, those barriers are there to stop innocents being killed. Yes? Muslims killing innocent people. Right, okay. Right. The Thank IRA. you for your They're question. My answer is this. We Muslims, we are innocents ourselves. Yeah. So how can we kill innocents? We Muslims, we are innocents ourselves. So how can we kill innocent? Because we Muslims, we are innocent, we are not criminals. So simple as that. No. So ladies and gentlemen, Islam is so beautiful. Islam is so nice. Islam is so acceptable. Islam is so believable that not only we Muslims, we speak highly about Islam. But did you know, even non-Muslims have good sayings about Islam. Even non-Muslims have highly praised Islam and the Muslims. For example, a British speaker, a British writer, A. M. Stoddard, A. M. Stoddard, a British writer, he wrote about Islam and he said Islam the most civilized and progressive. Another British writer, H.G. Wells, very well known, very famous, H.G. Wells. About Islam, H.G. Wells wrote, he said, elimination 
of racism an outstanding achievement of Islam, which is true. For example, for example, in Islam there is no racism. I'll give an example. Assalamu alaikum. Jazakallah. May Allah bless you. Now, you are a young Muslim. You are an European. I am an old Muslim. I am an Asian. So as H.G. Wells says, elimination of racism, an outstanding achievement of Islam. So when we are Muslim, whether we are European, whether we are from any continent, whether we are white, black, any ethnic group, any color, there is no racism. Yes? That is why. Assalamu alaikum. So we take highly of each other. We look after each other. Why? Because we are Muslims. Why? Because we believe in La ilaha illallah. There is no God but Allah. Muhammad Rasulullah. Muhammad, peace be upon him, is the messenger, is the prophet of Allah. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. Mankind was realized. You want to finish? The true Lord is Rabbi.